colleagues and friends. Uh, I'm more than honored and happy really that something that we've been working on for some time with uh, Professor Babic, whom I'd like to thank really for initiating the call this uh, event today, uh, that we finally realized the arrival of our today's uh, uh, guest and lecturer, Professor Evangelos Proto Papadakis. I have to be precise, you know, and uh, I'm really happy that uh, he's to, uh, today uh, with us. Uh, hopefully, uh, not the last time. I hope that this is really the beginning of some cooperation we already spoke about. Just briefly, he put everything. I mean, for for a brief information that you have to know about him, he's uh, 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 coming from National and Capodistria University of Athens, where he's teaching applied ethics. And he is also director of a, a, a research lab for, for applied philosophy at the faculty, and also uh, being involved in uh, theoretical issues and uh, debates and so on. He is head of the Greek unit of uh, uh, UNESCO chair in bioethics located in Haifa. So, so as you see, he is dealing for a very long time with uh, issues uh, of uh, bioethics. And I will take no more time and uh, asking him to, to take uh, the floor. And Stefan will mediate uh, our, our today's debate. And of course, after that, uh, uh, after uh, uh, initial lecture, that is, let me say, more philosophical in the sense of uh, uh, idea about euthanasia and the uh, right to die based on Kantian uh, uh, approach. After that, I ask him also that during the debate we briefly spoke, speak about the, uh, let me say, state of the bioethical issues and debates within the Greek property. So, Emmanuel, thank you very much for coming and please. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. To me, it's a great honor and uh, it sounds an opportunity to, to be there for, for which I'm grateful to uh, my dear friends, uh, I dare say, Yvonne Babis and uh, Mr. Durkovic. Uh, Thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you very much for uh, th th thanks to everybody for, for being here. Uh, th this will be a traditional lecture. Uh, I mean, I'm going to, to, to re read it out, but uh, some at any point you may uh, in interrupt and ask whatever uh, uh, cross your mind or uh, express any thoughts you have or any objection or uh, remark or, or, or anything. Um, I would like also to add that to me being Belgrade and uh, in front of the, 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 the Serbian uh, academia is like being home, it feels like being home. Uh, I also wish that this collaboration continues and, uh, okay, this is it, let's, let's start. Uh, the, 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 the topic of my lecture is uh, the right to die. Uh, actually, from that point, I start, start reading out my, my, my lecture, my communication. A direct reply sounds like a contradictory in terms to many, many of us, uh, to me as well, uh, since uh, also why. Um, if, if everything goes well, I'll also why. Uh, the discussion of the right to die lies at the core of the moral debate on euthanasia, regardless, the type, regardless of types and variants. Nevertheless, it is in respect of voluntary past euthanasia that it is usually considered the most decisive moral determinant. The right to die among all rights is the most controversial because it necessarily implies that life may on occasion be not worth living or that death may be preferable to life. While the first implication most of the times is challenged as violating common sense, I mean the implication that uh, um, life on occasion is not worth living. Uh, being contrary to, the, to common experience and posturing a slippery slope, and everybody knows why, but this uh, genocide incidents in uh, human history and the history of mankind, which dare to drive our, drive our mind to this uh, assumption. The latter is typically accepted as a common logical fallacy since there is no common scale on which life and death may be compared. Non-existence is simply inaccessible to human experience. So it's quite strange to, to claim that death is preferable to life because I know how life is, even a burdened life. Uh, I may have bone cancer and uh, suffer a lot, but uh, uh, still I, I cannot insist or claim that uh, that is preferable to that kind of existence because I know how it is to live with cancer, but I don't know how it is to, 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 be, uh, to be dead. 
this is the <coughs> this is the how is it called? This is the epictetus argument uh, concerning the, the smoky chamber. Uh, epictetus claims that there are some instances our life is like a is like a chamber, a room. Uh, from time to time, it uh, gets filled up with smoke, and uh, uh, as much as one can tolerate the smoke, you may stay in. But uh, uh, if the smoke becomes intolerable, uh, you just have to open the door and go out. This is <coughs> commit suicide. Uh, this this argument is it's called the incommensurability argument because it compares a smoky chamber. We know how it is with the out, uh, the, the, the condition outside outside the chamber, which we don't know how it is. Next to the concerns I already outlined, there is also extensive ambiguity with regard to the classification of such a right, assuming it could be admitted. It is a matter of controversy whether it could be considered a claim or a liberty right, as well as a positive or a negative one. The right to die in general poses major challenges for bioethics, law ethics, and ethics, literally driving human intellect to its limits. To paraphrase Kant's argument against suicide, the right to die puts, puts to challenge the intrinsic value of life, I quote Kant, through the same faculty uh, whose vocation is to impel the furtherance of life. Uh, since if I commit suicide, Kant says that uh, if I decide to commit suicide, I do it out of self-love. Uh, but self-love is a, a motivation, an instinct, a, instinct, a tendency, or a, let's say a property that nature has uh, has inserted in us in order to keep us to life and not to drive us out of life. It is not surprising at all that the endeavor to establish a moral or end a legal right to die has been rigorously rejected as undocumented, unsound, barren, and meaningless. While the right to life corresponds to concepts that more or less tend to be readily accepted as suitable to, to either the human condition or to our moral intuitions or sentiments, so as, so as it requires much effort to be charged and questioned, at least prima facie. The situation is quite obvious with regard, with regard to the rights to die. This is only expected since, since the notion of life and the concept of rights seem, seem to harmoniously interlock, while death seems to be in direct just, just oppositions, just opposition with both. But this couldn't be otherwise. Death is by definition a scandal to reason. To me, it is the other scandal, I mean, the fact that we have to be born and then Scandals can be resolved only by faith, religious or other. The concept of, the concept of moral rights, on the contrary, is the crest of rational moral humanity. I use Kant's terminology here. Therefore, the term right to die seems to be an exemplary contradictio in terminus case, since it makes appeal to an impossible connection. It aspires to combine what is by definition, by definition irrational with what is the most remarkable offspring of rationality. Contrary to the above, in this short paper, I will argue that the right to die, this short presentation actually, I will argue that the right to die could be justified in the case of passive euthanasia as an autonomy related negative or liberty right, on the one hand, or the solidarity based positive or claim right on the other. And I'll explain uh, the, the difference between the liberties, uh, claim rights, etc. Rights, regarding, regardless of their nature, to it whether they are discussed as legal, moral, human, or other, are either permissions to enti or entitlement, entitlements acknowledged, acknowledged to right holders. Acknowledged to the right holder to do or to be done to, or not to do something, or to be left alone. If I have a right, I, I, I am a entitled to, to do or to be left alone to do something. Uh, nobody has uh, any, 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 any right to interfere with my situation or with uh, my, my, my relation to, to what is protected by the rights that is being discussed.
On the left of the above, the debate concerning the right to die obviously would never be about the fact or the event of death per se. Instead, what, what is actually debated is whether moral agents are entitled or should be anyway allowed to decide the time, the fashion after, and the circumstances in which they will experience their inevitable death. In other words, the proponents of the right to die claim that in their view, moral agents should be permitted or even assisted, this is also an issue that should be discussed, to die on the one hand when the continuation of their life would be against their will and their best interests, of course, and on the other in the most humane and less agonizing way possible if this, if this is what they wish. <coughs> Suggesting a right to, to, to secure the above doesn't seem un unreasonable at all. After all, we are all mort mortals, and this is it is only expected that we would have a strong interest in being allowed as much control as possible over our death. The establishment of a right to die would be uncontroversial if the debate was on suicide and not on euthanasia. But of course, no such debate could be on suicide. Suicide has no need of rights to remain an option for moral agents. The decision to commit suicide rests with the person concerned and nobody has the power to prevent one from taking his life, at least under normal circumstances. With regard to euthanasia, however, the establishment of the right to die is of pivotal importance. The most morally significant difference between euthanasia and suicide is that the former, very much unlike the latter, requires the direct intervention of another moral agent. Therefore, in the case of euthanasia, to accept the right to die might only mean that moral agents, on the one hand, are perfectly justified to ask for our direct actions to see their life terminated, and on the other, that the, their request should be fully met by another moral agent, since all others would acknowledge a corresponding, corresponding duty of theirs to respect such a request and, and respond to it. In other words, the right to die in the case of euthanasia appears to be a claim right. This is what sparks controversy among the proponents and the opponents of the right to die. In particular, and this par excellence applies to bioethicists that are, that are, are under the influence of the Kantian tradition in ethics, any particular right could be seen as the offspring of a previously established corresponding duty on which the right in discussion is founded or based. Or, in accordance to Raz, I have a right if and only if some aspect of my interests is sufficient reason to hold another person to be under a duty. Here, please allow me to, to, to uh, mention the Hoffelian analysis of right uh, on which uh, my, my PowerPoint presentation is based, uh, and not that much uh, for the sake of this uh, presentation, but uh, mostly for the sake of the discussion that is, is probably to follow after the, after the presentation. According to uh, Wesley News, uh, Newcomb Hochfeld and his famous uh, classification of rights, uh, rights are distinguished, actually rights are, uh, as I already mentioned, entitlements. Entitlements to do or to be done to something or to be left alone to enjoy. Let's say enjoy. Okay, if we are talking about death, enjoyment is not, of course, the first word that comes in uh, uh, our mind, but uh, Let's use it. Uh, you see, in the we, we have claim rights that correlate the the, uh, the 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 tabs below the first row, the second row uh, includes correlative correlative uh, um, not the things cor correlated so to to the, the the ones that are are, are mentioned in the first row. Claim rights are correlated to duties. This means that if I have a claim right, I have a claim right only and only if somebody else or everybody else have, has a correlating duty to do what my claim right uh, protects. I suppose that... Uh, okay, let's, let's put it straight to the, the, the case of euthanasia. In the case of I have a claim right, so to, to being assisted today, this would mean that each one of you should 
be under a certain duty to help me die or to allow me to, to, to die uh, by the natural course of my, my situation. Apart from claim rights that are <coughs> certain entitlements, we have liberties or privileges, which means that uh, uh, privileges uh, uh, is my in my mind I want to something that could be altered. Uh, I have the privilege to speak, to express myself, but this privilege is, is, a, is a lesser, a lesser right, of course. You also have the privilege. Yes. Sorry, uh, I'm yeah. just looking for uh, uh, to, to turn off the conditioner if because so to increase to increase yeah. heating yeah. or uh, <laughs> 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 to breathe. Uh, yeah. yeah. mm. uh, Exercise your 
right, speak. Mm. No, no. No, no. So, the right to speak seems to be more than just a mere liberty. Limited. Yeah, uh, exactly as it is with the right of, uh, to freedom. Uh, freedom is not an unconditional right. Uh, you, you, you are entitled to be free as, as long as you don't break the law or uh, under specific. Yeah. So it's not a claim right according to Hoffman, it's a, it's a liberty. Which are the claim rights? Hmm? Which are the claim rights? The claim right is, uh, let's say, that in a uh, liberal democracy is the right to life. No, property. You, you have property. Property yeah, or property, of course, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But pro pro property is also uh, regulated uh, by specific conditions. I mean, the, under specific conditions, in the case of bankrupt, uh, you, you don't have a claim right to your property. No, no, I, I think the property is, is a right, mm -hmm. right example. When I take a stick in a hiking situation, I take it, it's lying next to the path, and I take it, it's mine. Mm -hmm. So uh, at that moment, the normative position of the whole world changes, and everybody else loses the right to take that stick mm -hmm. because it's, it's mine. So it's it's a very clear case that property is uh, accompanied to the duty of all others to respect mm -hmm. my yeah. In the context, uh, I mean regardless of any contracts and, and mm -hmm. lit, written ownerships and the issue that I own, what I own, in the, in the absence of when I'm not taking that in the hands. Yeah, property is a um, uh, brilliant example of how this works. Um, allow me to insist in, in, in the context of liberal democracy, because in, in, my, in other uh, in monarchies, let's say, everything goes up to up to. I, 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 I don't, I, as a country, I, I have to confess here. Uh, when I take the stick, you, uh, and few of us, the screener, Misha, are walking on a hiking, mm. and being older than you, I feel tired, and I s see the stick, and take the stick. Mm -hmm. It's mine, regardless of any liberal or whatever uh, theory. That's a kind of point. Mm. Because if you try to uh, take it from me, it will be offensive yeah. and disrespectful. And the duty to respect personality, which is not the thing, but person, is implying that you don't have the right to rob me from my state. You have a, a, a no right, let's say. Or, but that's, that's claim right. Yeah, the, the, the Kofelian analysis. Well, regardless of any, any uh, institutional background, mm -hmm. it's a claim right in moral sense. Yeah. And I think Hall Crawford might mean that by claim right. This is this is the, the let's say the tricky the tricky part here. The, the Kofelian analysis of rights is uh, concerns only the, the the structure of the rights, not yeah, the well, the moral justification. So wh why do I have a claim right to do? Kofel cannot answer that. But since you have a claim right to that, this implies that everybody else has a duty. It's a structural uh, let's say analysis. Uh, it's correlative an analysis uh, of duties and rights, uh, etc. But justification, as you very well uh, have been pointed, is, uh, is another thing. It, uh, it depends yeah, on to, to, to me, it's, it, it depends on our ethics. To, 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 but uh, I, I'm not that popular in, in Athens for saying so. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but but it, it's, it's relevant for, for our main issue, mm. uh, euthanasia. The right to die. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Of course. Uh, uh, Directly. Uh, probably the, 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 the next transparency will explain this much better than uh, I don't know. A power is the, 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 the ability or the entitlement to change one's condition, and this will be explained uh, later on. Uh, if I have, a, I have a power to do something, this brings liability to others to, to abide by that. By that, I mean, the, the state has the power to. To, to alter my situation concerning the situation concerning my, 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 my freedom. So I have a liability, or others have a liability to that power. Pro professor grading students. Professor? Pro uh, professor grading students. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, students have a liability to yeah. uh, by, by the procedure. Uh, I immunity, uh, to me, immunity is the most important. Uh, um, uh, element in that uh, in that analysis, immunity is uh, 
when somebody uh, enjoys or uh, has the entitlement uh, not to have his situa situation altered by, by anybody else. Uh, we'll see later on. And, and this produces disability. If, if, if I have immunity to, to uh, let's say, being killed, uh, this disables everybody else, the states, etc., from, from uh, having me killed. Uh, this is what we discussed previously. If I have a claim right, uh, as stronger is, uh, as my claim right is, uh, uh, the, stronger, the stronger is your duty towards me to, to, to respect my, my claim right. But it, this also implies that I cannot have a claim right to something in the case I have a duty to something. Uh, if I have a duty, but this goes without saying, of course, if I have a duty to arrest uh, somebody, I don't. I, may not have a claim right not to arrest him. Uh, th th these are opposites. And in the former uh, transparency, hopefully this, this goes to no, this, uh, You see that claim rights and uh, think, yeah, you see that they are correlated, but also in a negative, uh, in a negative sense. Uh, this is uh, much more uh, detailed analysis of claim rights. You see that uh, uh, Claim rights, claim rights, and duties. This, this uh, arrow corresponds to duties. Uh, is a situation where A is protected from interference by B in relation to F. Let's say you may suggest uh, just an example yourselves, uh, uh, or against B's withholding of assistance in respect to F. This, this is tricky because uh, the people who, who advocate the uh, a right to die as a claim right also insist, insist on the duty of B to provide assistance in uh, F I which is uh, being put to death and uh, the duty the duty of B uh, B is under a correlative duty to abstain from interfering with A from fine from let's say having his life terminated or is required to facilitate A to, to F. Uh, and to me, this is the, 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 the stronger, stronger uh, argument pro euthanasia uh, as far as the right to die uh, is concerned. Uh, it's, it's connected with the position of position, actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. If, 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 if the patient has a claim right to being left to die or to be facilitated to, 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 to experience a uh, painless and uh, less agonizing death, then the doctor should facilitate. It's another thing to let something uh, happen, and another thing uh, to, to, to facilitate something. No, and, yes, yeah, of course. And this is all those debates about the abortion already or euthanasia, yeah, yeah. which is if the doctors should have the right to abstain from that if, it, if they are wishing, for example. Mm. And although, although we were still at the structural part of the uh, of the right to die, of the, how the right to die is structured, I mean, and not any other in the justification part. I don't mean at this point to, 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 to pinpoint that uh, there's also, also a moral distinction between uh, doing something or allowing something, facilitating something. Facilitating something means to help somebody. Can okay, you bring one page back? Uh, no, this one reads a bit. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, abstaining from interfering is actually allowing suicide as something that is legitimate. Or, or passive euthanasia. Uh, oh, yeah. But requiring facilitated assisted suicide no, no. is much, much stronger than the first. Yeah, uh, legally, uh, structurally, in, uh, according to that. Uh, uh, Part of the analysis and also morally. Um, at the first, uh, as uh, Professor Babi very, very, very uh, accurately pinpointed, is the, the, the first uh, uh, letting something happen is committing to act, it's omission. The, 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 the latter is commission. Uh, consider this, uh, we stay at a very a very nice place uh, that belongs to the university, and there, there, is, a, there, is, a, there is a boiler in, in the room. Uh, I'm not quite sure because I have that uh, 
let's say, minor psycho psychopathy, <laughs> or psychopathic uh, uh, incidents uh, occasionally, but I can't remember if I, uh, if we, we turned off the, 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 the boiler, the, I mean, the, the water boiler. Uh, in the case, uh, we haven't done this, it's a mission to do something. Of course, we didn't intend to, 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 to have the, the whole building uh, uh, explode, <laughs> of, of, of course. So the, the, there is some, of course, there, there is, we are liable for, for having done so. I am liable for having done so. But uh, uh, the, 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 the moral, uh, the moral assessment of my, my action is different. Uh, I consider the case uh, in which I intentionally left the boiler uh, on in order to have the building explode and people killed. So it's a different thing to not to to allow something to happen and different things to facilitate. In the case, uh, facilitation means it involves doing something in order to bring about the, the effect of that. Uh, this example uh, you say it's about purpose, not yeah. about active or passive. Yeah. Uh, it correlates with that. Uh, it's not a, uh, on the purpose, it's not a, that's the purpose. In the case you, you facilitate somebody's death, I mean, consider the case in which I'm uh, connected with all these tubes and cables, etc. And uh, I ask uh, any, any, any of you uh, to, 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 to allow me to die. And this means that you have to, you have to turn off the next mm -hmm. means. I mean, passive euthanasia is something that the doctor does not do on purpose. It's not in, in some cases. In other cases, it's shutting down the, the, the life-supporting uh, machines. In that case, you have to switch off. Uh, switch on off purpose. On purpose. Yeah, yeah. Passive and active. But from the other side, abstaining from interfering doesn't require presence in it of anybody else. Mm. Uh, if you are doing that for yourself alone. But requiring facilitate requires uh, determining who is the one whose duty is to facilitate. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, that's, I think that's very important part because it can be connected with counting duty to help, which is one of the most basic duties. Mm. It's restrictive, of course, yeah. but in general, a duty to help is uh, a moral duty, and is there, is, there, is there a real need to facilitate? There might be a need to point to someone who is uh, to help mm -hmm. and not for mercy, which is supererogatory, but from the beauty. Mm -hmm. so no, sorry, uh, uh, sorry for interrupting, we will, we will spend half an hour and I think that we maybe start <laughs> That's something. Just let's like try to, to give him the floor for the, <laughs> to explain the, the whole argument and after that we will return to specific uh, point because so otherwise we will miss the lunch, I think. So, uh, so, so, sorry, but that's, that's the most important part. Yeah, I don't know about you, I enjoy this, uh, this way of doing things. I mean, uh, giving a lecture is most of the times so not that uh, satisfactory to... I, I mean, if you get involved, I am fully fine. It's okay, yeah. but, 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 but let's, let's, usual structure. Let's see it through, yeah, let's see it through. Yeah, well, see it through. Well, and, well, uh, we're not philosophers, actually. Yeah, yeah okay. So, uh, having a claim right, I, 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 I skip most of, most of the non transparencies. A's claim writes that B, F's, uh, is correlated to B's duty towards F to F, but also to B's duty towards F, A to facilitate F. This is the crucial point, as uh, you have uh, remarked. And B's duty towards A to refrain from preventing A from fine. And this is passive euthanasia uh, that doesn't uh, require the involvement of, of a doctor. I mean, the doctor just doesn't connect the patient to the left supporting means. Uh, uh, it also means A's absence of duty not to have. I, I've highlighted this because the, it, it's not all the times, uh, it's, it's not a, a, all the times uh, self, uh, self uh, evident. evident yeah. so, no. uh, it's also in liberal democracies, but uh, in monarchies it's not self evident. In, uh, in other states, it's not as well. So, uh, liberty and no right, you see the, the, the relation. Uh, a substance of duty to abstain, abstain from F, this is a liberty. Uh, B has a no right 
this correlation. Uh, if I don't have a liberty, if I have, I have a liberty to something, but anyway, you know, I mean, the, the transparency quest quite telling, let's also, let's skip the explanations. Power, powers and liabilities, and this is the scheme. And immunities and disabilities. The Hufelian analysis uh, of uh, entitlements uh, uh, has many, many, uh, let's say, champions, but it also has many, many people who uh, uh, challenge. Excuse me, I have to interrupt uh, you. Power here doesn't mean uh, uh, pro power, hmm? as a uh, power here. It's a normative term, not, not a role term. It's not just a possibility to change. No, it, it's a, according to this, that power. Yeah. If, if you have immunity... As a power of a professor to grade students. It's a normative concept. Mm -hmm. Not just a power. Not a capacity. No? It's not a capacity, it's a normative. Yeah. yeah. So there is the could be the capacity, but no power. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is the term that Copen uh, uses. So yeah, I'm not sure that there. Uh, and so here is a correlative correlative table, and uh, we discussed about it. Uh, the, what is interesting is uh, opposition axiom. If you have a claim right, then you don't have a no right, and if you have, if you have a liberty, then you don't have a duty. This, this is quite interesting, but. Uh, <clears throat> I think it's not, not very, very much related to what we're going to, to say later on. And concerning it, if you have a power, you don't have a disability. But if you have a disability, you, don't, you, you may not have a power. This partially answers what you said. If you have an immunity, you can't have a liability, and vice versa. And uh, this is it. This was the short presentation concerning uh, uh, the, 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 the systematic, systematic structure of uh, rights and entitlements uh, that Hoffel provides, but uh, Hoffel doesn't say anything about justification, and to me, it's uh, an honest thing to do because uh, <coughs> a legal expert uh, is not there to provide justification. To me, the, the, the ethicist is uh, to provide justification for. for, for uh, legal norms. Uh, this means that, uh, in, in my view, and this is what makes me uh, unpopular to want to, to, to be part of my academia, uh, a, more, a more view precedes uh, a, legal, a legal norm, a moral norm. Uh, a legal norm is founded uh, upon uh, a moral norm. But I'm a guardian dead, it doesn't take me into account. take me seriously in all the times. So, <coughs> let's Pass to the justification, justification part. In Kantian terms, any duty is a voluntary, self-imposed and mandatory, mandated by reason, absolute obligation. And this is justification to Kant. For, for Kant, reason is always justification from a moral, a moral a, a duty. Then, with one short parenthesis here, a, a, a duties may be justified upon reason, but Rights cannot, and this is a huge discussion to to to, to make. Uh, or it's much more difficult to to to, to found uh, rights upon upon reason. Kant uh, opts for for basing duties upon upon reason and then producing rights. I mean, not Kant said. <coughs> In Kantian terms, uh, any duty when it's a uh, voluntary, self-imposed, and mandated by reason absolute obligation. In brief, if I have a duty to do or to abstain from doing something, there would be no rational justification, rational justification, not legal or of any other kind, no rational justification to opt for any other choice among those provided as alternatives in the given situation, except for what duty commands me to opt for. If I acknowledge a perfect duty of mine towards others to keep promises, this is what famous pardon by Kant, there is no other rational alternative for me except to keep the certain promise I have given, although this might be against my best interests at the moment or contrary to what I desire. 
duty on this account is a self-imposed restriction of my in instinctive nature. I, I, my instincts tell me to, um, uh, compel me to lie. But in the case, I, I, wish I, I won't repeat myself in the following. Uh, uh, in, in the case, I opt for lying. I, I choose to lie. Uh, I, I assume a world in where the, 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 the notion of promise exists and doesn't exist at the same time. Because I think of consider what would happen in the case that everybody uh, everybody would accept as a, as, a, as, a, as a moral norm, as an axiom, to act according to this, to, 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 to that premise that uh, 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 would allow, allow us not to keep promises. Consider that uh, for a moment that uh, uh, me and uh, you and everybody in this world at the same time uh, adopt as a, as a premise, as a moral premise, as a moral axiom, as a moral principle, better, not to keep promises. What would happen? The thing that the world would become focus, focus is uh, something that, that is not of interest to, to, to Kant. But uh, I would have the, the <coughs> principle in, in my mind, my thoughts, uh, that uh, I shouldn't keep promises in a world that no, no promises would be given. Because if everybody accepts as a, as a principle not to keep promises, nobody would promise anything to, to, to anybody else. So uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's like uh, abiding by or trying to abide by the principle to 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 to, to hunt uh, or to to, to uh, let's say um, uh, acquaint yourself to mermaids. There are no mermaids in, in such a world. There will be no property. But uh, I would try still try to abide by the principle not to to respect promises. This is <coughs> irrational. Something that to Kant is uh, unacceptable. Uh, <coughs> Well, my rational nature simply allows for nothing else, save to do as duty compels me to, as far as I make my decision as a rational moral agent. Uh, to, to a rational moral agent, the, the, the only option available is to keep promises. Although every aspect, every other aspect of his, uh, let's say, um, of his entity might direct him not to keep promises. But as a rational agent, I only, I'm only uh, allowed to keep promises. Any right on the contrary is an absolute permission, entitled or freedom to do, or to be done unto, what it refers to. Uh, Mr. Please, uh, you, you may put an end to this at any time. No, I mean, no, no, you, you, you know the... Just go on. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you, you know the schedule and uh, I know I'm out of this uh, schedule already. Uh, the moral rights of my property, for example, means that I am allowed to dispose of my property as I wish. I am free to retain it, to quit it in favor of any beneficiary I choose to, or even to destroy it. Since the right to property is acknowledged as a legitimate moral one by the moral community I live in, other moral agents are obliged to abstain from any action that would disallow me to deal with my property according to my will, and this according to the Kantian uh, analysis of duties. When it comes to moral rights, contrary to how it is with legal rights, concerning which there is unanimous consensus that they are bestowed upon to persons by legal systems, the major issue of dispute regards their foundation. It is usually assumed that moral rights are based either upon God's will or human nature, broad social consensus, utility or pure reason. These are the five alternatives uh, that are, to, uh, at least to me, are the most favorable. To me, the only proper foundation of rights may be reason, since every other basis may only be dependent either on the idiosyncratic, ontological, or metaphysical views one adopts, or on individual taste. People should be acknowledged specific rights because God wants them to be acknowledged specific rights, or as, or are as bearers of an immortal soul, or on grounds of, of an evanescent social consensus, or just because it's much more useful to, to be acknowledged rights than not so. But since fundamental and ontological as such, as the, the ones I mentioned previously, and metaphysical premises are not unanimously, unanimously accepted, while at the same time utility is not being agreed upon by everybody, nothing but pure reason, in my view, may serve as a proper found ground for asserting rights for moral agents. 
uh, if, if you try, try to base rights upon uh, and uh, transcendent goods, uh, this is good for you and the people for, for the people who this works for you and for people who believe in the same God, but not to me, not to me, since I don't believe in the same God, God I may not believe in the same God uh, as the one you believe in. Uh, but rights can only have indirect foundation on reason, as based upon or better as deriving from corresponding duties that are mandated by reason, so as to challenge or reject duties would be to challenge or reject reason, which is self-defeating, since one should make use of a reasonable argument, of a rational argument, to, to reject what the argument uh, states or claims. In short, as far as, far as the Kantian tradition in ethics is concerned, duties come first and rights follow. In that sense, I have a right to my property because and only because all other moral agents have beforehand already acknowledged, acknowledged it as a perfect moral duty of theirs to respect property in general, since not respecting it would imply that one assumes a world in which the notion of property at the same time exists and doesn't exist. If moral agents, it's exactly the same as what, what we discussed previously concerning keeping promises. Uh, uh, If moral agents decided to act according to the maxim property shouldn't be respected, the notion of property would instantly vanish into thin air, but moral agents would still strive to conform their actions to the maxim not to respect property, which is utterly irrational, since property would exist as an idea in the intellect, but wouldn't correspond to anything existing in the real world. To sum up, any particular right that has no foundation upon a certain moral duty can be nothing else than flatus vocis. Uh, um, um, hmm? Well, uh, Roskelin, who introduces this term, uh, meant something that uh, uh, I'm not allowed to, 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 to tell you, but <laughs> okay, it's, it's a blue. A blue of the uh, Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Mm -hmm. The right to life, in that sense, based upon the morally binding duty not to threaten, harm, or take one's life, no matter what. It is more than obvious that this duty is a negative one. It doesn't demand, <coughs> it doesn't demand that moral agents should proceed to certain actions, but they should abstain from any action instead. It disallows me the right to life. Uh, I mean, it disallows me, for example, to shoot a guy to kill him. But it doesn't mandate that I should do something to save him from a hungry lion that has chosen him as a prey. Negative duties produce, produce negative rights, and the right to life is an exemplary case, a right purpose to protect my life against the contrary disposition of anybody else. Next to negative duties, rights, sorry, that are based upon negative duties, or to use Kantian terminology, upon perfect or strict duties, there are also positive rights, and these are based upon positive duties, the one Kant refers to as imperfect or praiseworthy. Positive duties compel moral agents to act accordingly in order to, to respect these duties, and this allows individuals to raise certain claims towards others to act in such a way as the right holder is subjected to the actions that would facilitate him to exercise his particular duty. A positive, imperfect duty, like the one to solidarity, Kant mentions as an example of imperfect duties towards others, seems capable of supporting a positive right to solidarity. Uh, to Kant, solidarity, uh, which is to respond to one's demand on, on, on grounds of, let's say, empathy or assert feelings concerning the human condition. Uh, that was a bit poetic. Uh, solidarity is a uh, an imperfect duty, which means it's not morally binding, it's, 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 not, uh, uh, it's not compelling, it's not a compelling duty. Uh, such, such duty seems capable of supporting a positive right to solidarity. And as a matter of fact, by ethicists our days uh, uh, often bring forward the, uh, let's say, the, the duty, no, the, 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 the rights to easy rescue. 
this means that uh, in the case I may rescue you by doing something that is trivial to me and very easy to do, uh, I have a duty to, to do so. If I was to, 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 to just uh, move my little finger and save, save your life, uh, Unitarians believe that I have a duty to do so. I completely disagree with that. And, and since I have a duty to do so, you, you have a right to, 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 to ask for, for my, uh, let's say, uh, solidarity, uh, for, for my solidarity in order to have your life safe. Moving to the right to die debate, it's obvious that any right to die could only be positive and never a negative one. Since one quests for euthanasia, and I think that this goes without saying, uh, if somebody asks for euthanasia, he asks for euthanasia, so he asks somebody to do something in order either to, 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 to die or to be left to die. Uh, <coughs> since one quests for euthanasia demands that the doctor or one's relatives act in such a way as to terminate, terminate one's life. Moreover, one who makes that claim actually claims as his right to be put to death. But if the right to die were to be seen as a positive right, this would mean that it should be based upon a previously established and agreed upon positive duty in the Kantian, uh, of course if you abide by the Kantian analysis of duties and rights. However, this sounds absurd. Assuming a particular moral duty of the kind, I ought to put to death anyone upon his request, sounds like an extremely demanding project. Even if we consider such a duty a solidarity-based one, it, it would remain extremely controversial since actively terminating one's life could never count as a proper means to express solidarity at least not under the light of Kantian tradition, tradition in ethics. A solidarity has a, a continuous, uh, let's say, essence. I mean, uh, I express solidarity to you now, and this means that uh, there will be some, some, some moments in the future, at least some moments in the future, where my solidarity would be enjoyed by putting you to death. <laughs> it, it's a strange way, uh, anyway, to, to express solidarity. Um, of course, in addition to this, expressing my solidarity in such a way in the case of passive euthanasia would violate the second formula of the categorical imperative, Kant's categorical imperative, that compels moral agents not to treat humanity, this, here I quote Kant, not to treat humanity whether in their own person or in the person of any other, any other solely as a means, but always at the same time as an end. And of course, putting somebody to death or asking to be put to death in order to avoid pain, etc., means that you treat humanity in your own person, or the doctor helps you treat treats humanity in your person solely as, as a means and not at the same time as an end. All the above imply that in the case we accept the right to die as a legitimate moral right, this right couldn't be based upon any, either negative or positive, duty, therefore it would be just flat focus. Even if, for the sake of the discussion, we consider the right to die as a solidarity-related right. This would be futile, since the duty of solidarity, as long as it is an imperfect one, according to the Kantian analysis of duties, of course, is not morally, morally binding. You are allowed to show solidarity at that instance, but not in the next one. Uh, you may give to one beggar a few coins, but you may skip the other beggar. So there is not morally binding as an imperfect duty. To sum up, to admit the right to die to proper or typical moral rights, we should either consider it a positive or a negative one, to which based upon a corresponding duty, a corresponding positive or negative duty. But the right to die cannot be a negative right, since it doesn't correspond to any negative duty, therefore it may only be a positive right. Yet, it is, it, 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 it is not a positive right, since it doesn't derive from the positive duty, from any positive duty. In that case, it's not the right at all. Uh, this, um, I'm only in the half of my presentation, uh, but the time is... Uh, may I sum up? Uh, yeah. yeah. May I interrupt you uh, for one uh, really selfish reason? 
Uh, I need uh, I, I need uh, to left this uh, meeting because so I need to sorry. I need to be uh, on another meeting yes. in uh, 15 minutes. So can I use my chance now to ask uh, a question? Maybe it's the right moment. Well, uh, actually, so do you have like five minutes? Maybe that uh, Evan goes sum up the argument. Oh, okay. If it's, it's okay. matter of five minutes or ten minutes, it is okay. Okay. I'll, I'll try to do this and to and sum up yeah, the yeah. arguments in, in, in less in less of But the selfish reason was actually also uh, uh, related to my question. Then I, yeah. I will wait. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it will be the first one. Okay. 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 Uh, all, all, all this I mentioned is uh, my my analysis, my approach to, to um, the right to die as either a negative or a positive right, uh, uh, deriving from or correlated to a negative or positive duty. Uh, in the Kantian sense, uh, um, uh, to me is is outdated. And it is outdated. It's, it, of course, it, it's theoretically sound and uh, in, in full accord, accordance to what Kant uh, describes in his uh, foundation of uh, I, you know, in, how it how it uh, foundation of morals and uh, the metaphysics of morals, but. Uh, Kant lived uh, two, 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 two centuries ago, and uh, back at the time, uh, life ended when life had to end. I mean, uh, you, you, you got sick, and, uh, or you, you got a stroke, or a heart attack, and uh, you just died. Uh, and nowadays, the rapid advances, and uh, of course, miraculous advances in, uh, in uh, medical technology, uh, Many, many, many times uh, uh, produce a situation in which uh, the patient, the patient is kept to something that resembles to a life. Uh, to no, nobody was actually it is a life. So sometimes we have a, a irreversible coma, or persistent vegetative state, or, or something like that. And uh, Kant was totally unaware of this uh, of this situation as, as such. Uh, I think in, a, in, a, in, a, in the real world, in the real contemporary world, so, some, sometimes uh, asking to be put, asking to be led to, to die, uh, has a meaning. Uh, it has a meaning uh, and it could be morally justified on many grounds, uh, and, and on many grounds that uh, are closely related to, to the Kantian tradition in ethics. Uh, consider a case in which uh, a, a person in um, agonizing pain uh, is kept to life by artificial means uh, against his will, uh, against his best interests, only because the doctor wants to avoid to be, in, to, to, to be in under a lawsuit that uh, he, 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 he let his, uh, uh, his patient die. At that case, the patient is used only as a means towards an end, and not as an end at the same time. The reason I will be kept in such a condition in life is, is only because that my doctor wants to avoid a lawsuit uh, and uh, the, what, what comes after, after a lawsuit, uh, the consequences of, of, of a lawsuit. Uh, so, one, one point has to do with uh, uh, treating the humanity in our own person, the person of anybody else, always at the same time as a, at the same time as an end, and never only as as a means. Uh, and a, another issue that, which to me is much more, uh, and we may discuss about this. I only give a brief account of, of, of my thoughts here. Another uh, another point has to do with uh, with autonomy. Uh, if my my According to my free will, or better, if and Kant, Kant seems to, to to sympathize with such uh, such occasions, because uh, of the situation in which uh, I, I, I suffer Alzheimer's disease, and uh, I see my uh, intellectual abilities deteriorate day by day, and uh, I foresee it's not hard to do so. I foresee that uh, in a few months, the doctors, of course, uh, uh, say that uh, my, 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 uh, uh, what I think is, is correct, uh, that in a few months, I will totally have 
lost my uh, intellectual abilities. Uh, and I, I want to preserve my dignity in the Gandhian sense of the term, and to preserve my, my dignity by autonomously deciding to terminate my life. Kant has allowed me just to read it a brief, brief passage. Kant has, in some uh, passages of his Metaphysics of Morals, uh, expressed some, some ambiguity concerning this. In the Metaphysics of Morals, he, he, he says, he writes, a man who had been beaten by a mad dog at the time the Alzheimer's was not that uh, common or was not recognized as Alzheimer's disease. Uh, it, I can't uh, refer here to it, hydrophobia. Uh, a man who had been bitten by a mad dog already felt hydrophobia coming on. He explained in, in a letter he left that, that since as far as he knew the disease was incurable, he was taking his life lest he harms others as well in his madness, the onset of which he already felt. Did he do wrong? We can't, the, the, these are the, the casuistic fragment uh, uh, Kant poses. And in his lecture on ethics, his lectures on ethics, um, Kant writes some unexpected things. In the case where a man is liable to dishonor, liable to dishonor, which means uh, deteriorating the, 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 uh, one's dignity or putting to threats for one's dignity. His duty, he is duty bound to give up his life rather than dishonor the humanity in his own person. It's, it's almost unbelievable that Kant writes such, 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 a thing, such a thing. For does he do honor to, to it if it is so to be dishonored by others? If a man can preserve his life no otherwise, than by dishonoring his humanity, he ought rather to sacrifice it. I mean, uh, Kant means his life, of course. He then indeed puts his animal life in danger, yet he feels that so long as, as he has lived, he has lived honorably. Uh, to Kant's dignity, and uh, dignity is closely connected to uh, autonomy, dignity is quintessential. Uh, life is not. Uh, I think that uh, in the case of passive uh, uh, euthanasia, where so, somebody asks and begs for putting an end to his uh, agonizing existence, uh, Kant wouldn't uh, uh, disagree with. Uh, would, would, I, okay, I suspect that Kant wouldn't disagree with uh, uh, accepting uh, passive euthanasia as a moral option under the circumstances, of course. Uh, this is it. Sorry, I, I went out of time. Uh, sorry, I, uh, yeah, I think we'll do it. Uh, uh, we'll see, we'll see. Well, thank you. Uh, uh, I'm Wesley Mikkels from Faculty of Philosophy. Uh, so, uh, the, my question was actually uh, uh, regarded uh, uh, your comprehension of solidarity in this case. So, and uh, the example with the little finger. So, uh, I comprehend solidarity as a grade of altruism, let's say, if you define in that way. So, uh, uh, helping uh, someone uh, in preserving his life, uh, or not helping someone uh, in preserving his life for a very selfish reason, is, is it justifies in your term of solidarity or not? The, um, As imperfect beauty. Yeah, uh, I, I think what you have in, mind, in your mind is a thick, uh, thick concept of solidarity. Um, the utilitarians mostly refer to this thing. Utilitarianism seeks uh, or pursuits, uh, um, uh, let's say, a minimum, a minimum condition for, for doing something. Uh, a condition under which not doing something is, uh, is not justifiable. So, uh, the, the moving your little finger example is uh, because moving your little finger mean, means nothing for you. Uh, the sacrificing yourself in, or, in order to, to express your solidarity to, to somebody is, of course, uh, uh, yeah, but regular. Yeah, it's, it's, it's super erogatory uh, at 
act as uh, Professor Babic uh, uh, said, but nobody is expected to act uh, on grounds of performing derogatory acts. You, you might be a hero or a martyr or a saint or anything else of the kind, and this is uh, wonderful, but uh, it's not the common, the common moral agent. So, um, this, um, how did I, uh, this easy rescue, this right to easy rescue, or the duty to easy rescue, uh, that uh, um, uh, substantiates that, that, that right, uh, is not uh, um, addressed to saints or martyrs, it's, it's, it's addressed to, to common moral agents. This means that if you see a beggar uh, and you have uh, 50 cents to spare, and this would save the beggar's life. You, 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 you ought to, since we discussed on youth, you ought, uh, give, you ought to give the beggar 50 cents. Uh, and this, of course, would mean, if we accept the right to his rescue, that the beggar should be, should be allowed to, 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 to ask you the 50 cents, uh, uh, of course, to bring forth his right to. to, to Take your 50 cents in order to, which is uh, quite tricky and uh, controversial, of course. I, I don't know if that's that. Uh, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's enough, but uh, like an example, uh, should we be solidar with uh, someone who, who wants to uh, end his life for uh, very, uh, very, uh, or the life of another person for the, uh, for which, uh, uh, for who is uh, responsible, like, like child or. Or, or purely embryo produced in IVF for very selfish reason, like dear self. Mm. Like? like dear self, uh, mm. uh, it's very selfish uh, reason. Well, so I like too, too much for myself and I, I, I can allow to, uh, 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 first, like example, I produce uh, uh, two, uh, two early embryos and in, uh, if, if you do that in IVF, the, the uh, we assume that uh, both embryos have the same right to life, of course. So the abortion is complete another uh, uh, story, so I don't want to mix this ca the, those cases. And in one moment during the pregnancy, early pregnancy, you, you or one woman decide to just to, uh, to do embryo reduction. A reduction from mm. very selfish to, reason. To keep just one. Um, yeah. Yeah. Not for medical reason, but just for selfish reason. Should we be solid like doctors with that decision or not? Mm. Um, highly controversial, but uh, because how, the how parenting is also imperfect duty. Yeah. How, how in, in, be that, in, in some way, if you're looking from point of abortion. My, my, my first uh, objection here is that uh, how. Would you be in a position to express your solidarity? What would you do to express solidarity? To, so, to do you perform embryo reduction or not? Ah, this is, this is not solidarity. To me, to me, this is not solidarity. It's either a duty or nothing. I mean, or something according to personal taste. I mean, if I'm a doctor and I'm under a duty to, to do whatever the, my patients ask me to do, but I, I'm not sure that this is the case anywhere in the world. I mean, Doctors have the same case uh, by yeah. euthanasia. Yeah. So Even in the Netherlands, we will be sympathetic with, uh, with similar conditions. Even in the Netherlands, the doctors have, uh, are, are entitled or allowed better to, to, to reject these uh, such uh, demands and uh, direct uh, this demand to other physicians that uh, are more uh, sympathetic to, 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 to these issues. Uh, I mean, you're not allowed to, do, uh, to, to, to treat another person, humanity in another person as a, uh, only as a means, but uh, also in the face of your, your, yourself, okay? And uh, if, if, if you are first a doctor and secondly a moral agent, it's quite uh, treating your humanity as a means and rather, rather than at the same time as an end. Doctors also have a... a the option to, 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 to choose. Mm -hmm. uh, just one more. Uh, <coughs> imperfect duties are, are a matter, are, are in the eye of the beholder, according to Kant. Kant says that uh, it's according to, to our nature 
to meet with these uh, demands, with such demands, or to, to, to uh, let's say, address our uh, uh, imperfect views according to our nature, not, not, not according to, not uh, the dem uh, compelling by, or demand mandated by reason. So, uh, his, his example is uh, cultivating one's talents. It's according to your nature to cultivate your talents, and everybody would enjoy the cultivation of your talents, but you may not, and uh, it's perfectly fine. If you are living in a Mexican village, it's in something like that. More questions? And I excuse for my dearly. Thank you, thank you for being here. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hope to see you again. Yes, good pleasure. Good pleasure. Uh, but yeah. we, we interrupted you, uh, I think uh, with, uh, No, no, it's, uh, it's okay. Uh, let's go ahead. Go on, finish, you know. I don't want <laughs> to be a rude. Uh, no, no, you were not yeah. rude. Uh, actually, we, we, dis, the, we settled that. Uh, uh, but the, the last my interruption was regarding power and capacity. Uh, I have a power to grade students, uh, meaning that my uh, grades are valid. Uh, that's not the capacity, just the mere possibility. And there is the, in the opposition that you cannot do that. And that's something that I call sometimes uh, Lockean error, uh, mixing or, or uh, not differentiating normative and uh, factual level. Uh, I, I have the right to the life and nobody can give, uh, take my life. That's not true. Nobody has the right to take my life. Which is quite different. But I like your uh, uh, lecture very much, and I think it's very, uh, it's brilliant in terms of seriousness and responsibility. Uh, and I say that with full responsibility for myself. Uh, I found in my own presentation four items regarding euthanasia of death, violence, suicide, help, uh, mercy, and uh, uh, pain. So, uh, pain is easy. Uh, suicide is not that easy. So, you, if you say that uh, you may permit, uh, at the moment you permit suicide as something that is legitimate right for someone, you open the door. But actually, uh, not enough. You open the door very, very little uh, because assisting or helping is much more than allowing. And as that is the crucial part. Uh, we have the duty to help. The duty to help is restricted actually only by, from the country point of view, but I think uh, it's so uh, really. Uh, that duty to help is restricted uh, in moral sense only by one parameter, and that is the, the, the higher duty to respect uh, the, 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 uh, anyone else, including the one you, you're helping. So you are not allowed to help against the will of those whom you help. That, by the way, uh, in a way, refutes the, the, that political ideology of our scheme, this possibility to, uh, to protect. It's clearly immoral. It's not morally justified. So, uh, taking that in, in, into account that we have the, the duty to help within those realms that uh, respecting others has been fulfilled, justified. Uh, that uh, duty is actual duty. And I don't follow that distinction between perfect and perfect duties. Duties are duties when they are actual, regardless of uh, the but if they are perfect or not perfect. And that's shown very clearly in many cases where imperfect duties are stronger than perfect duties. So, it's uh, just uh, theoretical scheme. So, the duty to help in matters of such high importance, like dying, uh, is unequal in a way as a duty to issue, uh, uh, what's the name of this? So, the, the, uh, the, the, the certificate of death. So, anybody has the right to, to the certificate of death. It's, it's clear, clear right. In, in that same sense, 
uh, the duty to help may be allocated to uh, some whose duty, official duty that, that is, which is very different from mercy, which is universal as supererogatory. So uh, that's, that's placing the burden on, on doctors. But that should be taken from grand salaries, actually. That duty to help might come to anybody uh, who happened, happens to be in the situation that that person is the only one who can help. But let me explain that in, in different terms. Let's say in my country there is a, a kind of very dangerous lethal epidemic in, in, in some uh, part, and the, it should be fought off. So we have to send some doctors there. Who, who will send it? Those who are co competent, who are experts. So if there are 15 experts and there is a need for five, we have the duty to make a procedure to select five among the 15. But if there is only five and there is a need for five, all of them are having the duty to go there. That's clear. So if you happen to be in the situation to, to help someone who is resigned to, uh, uh, to die uh, in a proper way, it's a kind of duty in the same, on the same level at which something that we didn't mention I think I didn't mention in my lecture too, and that's the, the duty to die, which is actually consisting of two duties, the duty to die, and the duty to die properly, and you cannot die properly if somebody who is obliged to respect you uh, rejects the fact. Concerning the distinction between uh, perfect and uh, imperfect rights. Um, to me, I actually there is um, a huge debate on whether there is a real distinction between uh, perfect and imperfect rights. Kant uh, structured his, his rights theory, his duty theory, sorry, and, and I meant perfect and imperfect duties in such a way, but uh, this is challenged by, by many people. Uh, there are indeed occasions on, during which abiding by an imperfect, imperfect duty is uh, uh, equally uh, significant or more significant than abiding with uh, perfect duty. Uh, Kant puts, puts it in a tricky way. Uh, he says that uh, it's uh, expected, I can't, I can't really recall now his, uh, his wording, but uh, he says it's, it is expert, expected, expected as according to our nature. To, 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 to act uh, uh, to act according to an imperfect duty, duty of ours. Uh, concerning solidarity, he, he says that uh, people who doesn't show solidarity still robs himself of the, of the hope that he, he, he will enjoy solidarity uh, in the case he's in need of uh, solidarity of other people. So the question here is, and this is what uh, initiates and sparks the, the debate, the question is uh, whether uh, acting against your, your, your instinctive or, uh, um, let's say, um, instinctive, or, 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 or against, or. against your nature would be, uh, would be a rational choice, uh, would be a rational decision. Uh, yeah, that's, that's the problem. You have to decide, right? not to calculate. Uh, mm. If you happen to be there, you may be abhorred by the, uh, the duty or the, the, the thing that you have to do. Uh, but uh, you're being abhorred. Uh, is in accordance with the nature. Uh, right, the, the imperfect duty is uh, actually the distinction is epistemological, mm -hmm. not, not uh, any further than, than that. Uh, the same issue we have uh, in the case of dying. One issue is when that it happened, the other thing, how we know that it happened. So, uh, perfect duties are much easier to know. It's like a very broad corner through which many things go through, and beneath of that is a very uh, narrow uh, sifter, which is a sifter of imperfect duties. But perfect duties are also imperfect duties. I, I think the imperfect duties uh, have to take into consideration our empirical uh, 
our empirical state. Yes. And that's yes. the problem. There's no transcendental. Uh, yes. 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 Exactly that. It's the empirical case. Is not the, uh, and this, this is the this is the, the, the tricky part. Uh, uh, can can we take empirical decisions uh, on transcendental grounds? Of course, since they have to abide by this, this getting quite technical. But uh, I wish it's not that that uh, that uh, this can be, uh, uh, absurd. Uh, can we take empirical empirical uh, decisions? Can we make empirical decisions on grounds of transcendental causes or reasons which uh, neglect your 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 empirical situation? I mean. Am I entitled or justified, ra reasonably, rationally justified, to, to rob myself? This is what exactly what Kant mentions in his fourth example of uh, due to solidarity. Yeah. Am I uh, uh, rationally the, justified? The empirical, the empirical yeah. part is very, very important. Of course, you, 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 you can't m m take, take in vacuum, decisions in, in vacuum. If you, if you see, for example, yeah. uh, triaging the, the, the read, it's Precisely so that you have uh, different calendars or circles, mm. one upon the other, and those uh, beneath are closer. So in the end, you you get what you want, and that's empirically determined mm. what you want, mm. not uh, something else. So uh, the empirical part is a necessary part of it, yeah. and it's not contained in, in perfect. Mm. 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 Perfect duties are two. Cool. You know, to, to me, perfect and perfect duties at least overlap with each other. At least I, I can, cannot say that uh, all of the times uh, are identical to, to each other, but uh, there are many times that they, they really overlap. And uh, perfect, imperfect duties, in, in a sense, are perfect duties in, 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 in that you cannot uh, um, rationally decide to act against your own freedom. Nature, if you don't have transcendent um, good reasons to do so, uh, I try to avoid the, the term transcendent reasons. Yeah, if you don't have good rational reasons to do so, stealing you, robbing yourself from the, the, the anticipation that you anticipation that you will enjoy solidarity is not a, a reasonable choice. It is not a, a choice that would um, substitute the principle uh, according to which to your will would uh, decide. But can, can I uh, just one more, and I won't speak uh, any longer uh, regarding the, the empirical and uh, uh, the issue of two embryos. Uh, he said uh, that uh, Russell said that he doesn't want to connect it with abortion, uh, but how how to do that? Actually, uh, if you make a selection between two embryos before the 14 days, you may take it as an act of contraception because up to 14 days there is no personal identity but after the 14 days there is no possibility uh, in not treating someone who has a personal identity as a means not as an end in itself so uh, it seems that it either has to be done quickly or it has to be connected with abortion in all negative sense in which it means. I agree. I, I'm very, very, very glad that uh, my, my friends uh, chose to omit the, to, to, to skip uh, the abortion. Uh, yeah, the reference to abortion of course. because it's a, it's a very complicated technical, technical issue. Um, uh, I mean, I, I, I don't know why, what is the threshold after which uh, personal I have many, there are many suggestions, but. Uh, I really don't know uh, when a person becomes a person. Um, the, 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 the question when a person becomes a person, according to Dan Broca, uh, I think is, is relevant to the question when a cake becomes a cake. It, it's, it's a bit cynical, but uh, I, I don't know where exactly the cake inside the oven has become. I'm, if I'm a religious person, I have that, uh, that answer, but if I'm a religious person, I, I, I don't have the dilemma that uh, concerns abortion at all. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's quite uh, quite tricky. Yeah. But it can, uh, you cannot uh, avoid collecting it under certain circumstances. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Could you repeat that, please? Uh, Mr. said that uh, I, uh, he doesn't want to collect it with abortion. And, and in my opinion, I said that uh, uh, he cannot avoid that collecting after 14, 14 oh, days. Yes, yes. 
uh, because uh, uh, there there is a capacity of personal identity. Absolutely. Be before 14 days, there is no such uh, because of that. Uh, in the legal sense. In the legal sense. Not in the legal sense. Before that is uh, metaphysical. Uh, be before that, that there is that uh, 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 soul of omnipotence, which means that each cell uh, has the whole information, and there is no one specific. Not at all. Ah, so uh, you can uh, broaden or expand that concept of uh, contraception up to 13th or 14th day, and they, they is giving you a, a time span in which you can select between two embryos before that point, but not after that. After that, it will be clear. Unless and the other abortion. Unless you are a Christian. Uh, to, to you it's metaphysical, uh, somebody may be metaphysical, but uh, if you believe a person, it's pure Killing pure, is, is annihilating, annihilating a person, yeah. not, not, for, not a Christian. Though. From from ground conception and on, and if you are a stoic from the 14th year of your life, and on, I mean, it's too, too, too complicated. Uh, to, to, to no, we may go in that sense, uh, uh, by the way of skepticism, and ask if all of us here are persons, or some of us are so much heteronomous that some that those who are such greatly heteronomous doesn't don't deserve to be called yeah. humans. Yeah. Oh. That's yeah, too far. That, that's the kind of procedure, yeah. 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 This way I said that yeah, happy, of course. I'm happy <laughs> <Of course. laughs> you wouldn't refer to a person. Yeah. Still if I killed that, that one that is uh, falsely called human because it's too heteronomous without any character and dignity or anything of that sort. Uh, uh, obeying moral rules only from the fear of punishment, I still be liable and yeah, of course. Of course. <laughs> but that's completely yeah, I agree. Very true. Uh, then I will just try to uh, add a couple of issues, but what that says we are kind of running out of time, we don't want to use it too much. Uh, here, uh, I, I have to remind you for my wish to just give us a brief overview of uh, what is happening, what are the biggest issues in the theoretical, let me say, sphere in Greece nowadays, uh, uh, and what, uh, how, how legally actually uh, issues like abortion, uh, euthanasia, or surrogacy, let me mm -hmm. just emphasize them, are treated nowadays. Uh, uh, I, I had a, uh, before that. I also had one. I, I think. Uh, thank you anyway for, for a lot of lectures, and it's a pity that we didn't have it. Uh, I think it, 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 it would be much much easier for us if we uh, would have it uh, in written, because it's really very strictly argumentative, very interesting dialectic, if I may say, uh, and how how you actually exposed your arguments and it's, it's really very interesting for example this this very not, not very uh, often mentioned but and i think controversial argument that actually you put it uh, uh, as uh, uh, if, if i'm uh, right uh, that actually if uh, the only excuse for the doctor not to uh, uh, assist in uh, 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 euthanasia is to respect the law uh, then he is some kind of, uh, let me say, treating himself as an instrument uh, uh, humanity. So it's it's very interesting. We could debate quite a lot. But what I also wanted to, uh, and you, you know, we, we have these uh, uh, debates here. I'm very much concerned about the because of our internal debates also about the practical, let me say, outcomes of many of the uh, uh, positions we take and so on. And political too. And political as well, no. of course, you know, social in, in many ways. It's a long, I, I will not take a lot of time on that, but uh, what I'm thinking about is, uh, especially with euthanasia, uh, that uh, in the country or in the societies like Serbia is without any respect of the law. It's really very problematic uh, uh, if you would uh, start with, let me say, universalizing that as a right and as a duty, corresponding duty to the physicians also to practice that and so on. For many ways, I mean, we don't have a lot of time, it would be abused uh, uh, 
uh, in, in a very much problem. So what I was really thinking is, uh, and I don't know how to define that as something, some position in between, let me say, uh, uh, Kantianism in one way or uh, Christian approach in another way, and also in practical terms as a utilitarianism. But we were speaking and you were following actually the, the whole classical idea of universal right and universalizing. But I have this, uh, uh, and I will finish with that, uh, <coughs> to say that the approach that, for example, Carl Schmitt is uh, uh, using for a uh, state of exception and dictatorship generally. So what he is trying to, to construct as a position is uh, the way in which you should, uh, and you are obliged as a leader, for example, to break the law sometimes for the purpose of protecting the system and also, he said, to protecting the law in some way. So what, what I'm thinking in practical terms is that uh, uh, de facto, even in Serbia, in which we have, uh, uh, let me say, strict protection of any euthanasia in our criminal law, it is still treated uh, as, uh, uh, how do we call that, uh, 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 act of uh, uh, mercy. Uh, a killing game which is uh, protected uh, and uh, you could be uh, indicted for five years, uh, I think, if you are a practitioner for that. De facto, it is being, everybody knows, you know, pursued in, in, in some uh, ways from our, how we translate, Uvienti Center, our uh, ER, ER, ER uh, for example, ER. here, uh, up to even some, some uh, uh, let me say, uh, uh, clinics and so on. So, what I'm thinking, uh, and I would just, uh, if you could briefly comment upon that, and that's why I wanted to hear uh, Greek's solution and, and some other, how, how to deal with that. I'm afraid that if you universalize that legally and uh, de facto recognize possibility, that could, like we say, make bigger troubles than what you have now, in which it is normal, let me say, normatively forbidden, but de facto tolerated in some way. I, I just wanted to come up on that. But thank you very much. Once more, I'm sorry that we don't have more time for, for all of those arguments, which were really very it's important. It's uh, about a week uh, in uh, yeah. uh, uh, the, the issues are many and uh, very, very interesting. Um, uh, we had this uh, discussion a few hours uh, ago with the concern concerning whether um, a leader or a ruler should uh, not conform to the law, but uh, and, uh, not admit that he doesn't conform to, 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 to the law. And this is a Protagoras uh, incident that uh, anybody should at least uh, pretend that he's uh, fair or just, and uh, those who, who don't even pretend that they are just, they should be killed uh, like, like a disease for the city. Because pretending that you are just means that you accept the legitimacy and the moral justification of the, of the norm, and, uh, Society, I can move on and say that. And at the time, uh, I, I was totally for this uh, this view. Uh, some some things may there was a president of Greece, uh, former president of Greece, Konstantinos Karamanlis, who said that uh, some things should be done and not told, them, and some things should be told and not be done. Uh, I was totally for for this view, but. Uh, in the meantime, while coming here, uh, uh, this brought more to my mind the the abortion, the abortion case. Uh, abortion was tolerated. This is toleration, or to, 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 to tolerate uh, euthanasia, or tolerate abortion, to allow it to happen, but uh, to allow it being performed, but not uh, fully legitimize it. Uh, or uh, yeah, and this has already been done, and uh, we, can, we can't, uh, we can't. Uh, looking back to the history. This has been done to the US and uh, it ended up with uh, uh, many, uh, well, abortion back in the US in the 60s, I think, or 70s, before abortion was uh, legalized uh, in most states. Now, in the states that it's not legal, uh, people travel, so in order to have abortion, then go back to their state. Um, uh, in, in, in Bronx, uh, the, the, the Municipal, uh, municipal authorities used to to to, to gather uh, to, to 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 pick up bodies of uh, prostitutes uh, from from the corners and the uh, sidewalks who had tried to to, to abort themselves. With
with umbrellas or things like that. And, uh, and, and let's not forget about the, 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 the let's say, black market of abortion. Uh, if abortion is not openly legal uh, and fully legalized, they're, 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 it should be taken into account. I, I'm not, I don't say that I'm, yeah. but it should be taken into account. Let's say, on euthanasia, uh, let's tolerate it, uh, but not overtly. Uh, don't, 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 let's not uh, legalize overtly. Why should it be performed? I mean, is it the same to, to perform euthanasia in your house by a relative uh, or by a doctor in the same in hospital? Uh, and uh, wh what are the means uh, provided? Uh, the, the allies, no, no, no allies, the Nazi, Nazi troopers, uh, Nazi commandos had the uh, uh, hydrocyanum uh, pill inserted to their tooth because uh, hydrocyanum uh, was supposed to, to, to bring about, uh, 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 let's say, a peaceful death. It's quite the contrary. So the thing is, the question is whether to regulate, fully regulate something and provide strict uh, uh, determinants to, 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 to see it uh, being, let's say, carried out or performed or something. And the other is to, to, to in order not to uh, produce determinants to social ethics or religion, etc., and to, to put under the car. I, I'm not sure, but we have to take into account historical examples uh, on how things turn out uh, when they were just being tolerated and not fully regulated. Uh, uh, this is the... Yeah, okay. Uh, could you briefly give us some review of the, 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 the situation in Greece? Greece. Uh, in, in Greece, um, I don't know if it's the same. I, I, I know it's not the same in Serbia. Uh, yet, but uh, I know that soon it will be the situation. Uh, we're blessed with a uh, uh, um, um, uh, bioethics commission, the presence and the function of the bioethics commission, who is an autonomous, autonomous commission, uh, uh, fully, fully independent of the state, which is, and uh, in, in, in for Greece, is a very, very good thing. And uh, this, <laughs> this commission produces. Uh, not fully binding, but uh, um, let's say directing opinions, and these opinions are uh, usually being uh, uh, res respected by by the, st the state. So um, this this bias commission of Greece uh, happens to it, it is very well structured. It includes uh, people from uh, from the clergy. Uh, people from uh, philosophy, law, psychology, etc. Even we don't have a philologist uh, in this uh, uh, in this commission. So the, the let's say the, the opinions that the, this commission produces are uh, uh, very much representative of what uh, the Greek society would accept or is ready to accept, or uh, according to some. Uh, so. When it comes to Soviet motherhood, uh, it's strictly regulated, but totally permitted. Uh, there, there is no objection, no moral objection, actually no, no striking moral objection against uh, uh, Soviet motherhood or IVF or... Uh, the, the thing is with uh, euthanasia, uh, my, my PhD happened to be on euthanasia back in 2002, and it's the only PhD in euthanasia since. Which shows that uh, uh, the Greek society or academia is reluctant to, to discuss euthanasia, and it's obvious why, obvious why it is that reluctant. Uh, euthanasia has been performed in uh, Greek uh, hospitals, uh, most of the time it's openly performed, uh, but uh, usually in terms of uh, um, setting down uh, the life supporting means, not uh, in. Uh, not, uh, not in the form of uh, act, act of euthanasia. It's mm -hmm. yeah. um, this, this is a major problem because <coughs> public health policies and uh, public health systems are, uh, have, uh, their budgets are very cut off these, these days, in Greece uh, at least. Uh, this means that uh, people are kept in you know, this is a kind of existence against their will or against the will of their relatives for a longer period of time and uh, the, the most uh, 
uh, it was important uh, on grounds of uh, moral justifications that, or moral reasons that, that they die in agonizing death. Uh, so the, the discussion that uh, has started a few years uh, already now in, in Greece is uh, whether uh, active euthanasia should be favored uh, uh, against passive euthanasia and uh, may be regulated. Passive euthanasia is regulated in terms of futile medical treatment. I mean, the doctor is entitled to shut down the life supporting means uh, by claiming that any further treatment would be futile. Uh, uh, the same doesn't apply, of course, to active euthanasia because we don't have futile, the discontinuation of futile treatment. And uh, this, is a, this is an issue in the case of passive euthanasia. The patient dies in agonizing death uh, because it dies out of suffocation, of intoxication, of uh, uh, anything of the like. It's, it's, it's an, open, an open issue. Uh, as far as abortion is concerned, uh, abortion is, in one way or the other, legally permitted in Greece uh, at any stage of pregnancy. Uh, for social reasons, uh, for the first two, three months, and for uh, reasons that are connected with the health of the, of the pregnant woman uh, up to the, the end of the pregnancy. Uh, up to the end of the pregnancy? Yes, yes uh, where we have stillbirth, the baby is being born. But that's the nurse. That's yeah. the nurse. Yeah. Everywhere is now. Mm. Just briefly, uh, forgive me if it's, if it's if it's self obvious, I'll just come back to the last distinction you've made between uh, tolerating and not overtly regulating. It's a very helpful uh, distinction and it is uh, substantially founded in the empirical social world. Would you think that this is a, a domain or a dimension where a neo Aristotelian concept of chronesis comes in and a sort of rehabilitation of Aristotelian ethics? Mm -hmm. Would you have any thoughts on that? Actually, it's very closely connected. I mean, you have to be precocious and this. This, uh, this is a place to both sides of the coin, isn't it? You have to do things in advance of uh, what is the, the, the outcome of the uh, Okay. Oh. It's, it's, there's a very strong sense of the concept of promise is being recirculated. Uh, not familiar with the Aristotelian tradition and oh. Berger's effect, but uh, uh, promise is less than a. Uh, it's very close. Very close. Huh? And the question I won't ask. Because, but <laughs> go on. The question I won't ask because it, it, will, it, will, it could um, initiate a, a snowball effect here and we are aware of the time. Is, I would like to go back to your very helpful exposition of uh, Hoffold's table and we'll come back to the claim vis a vis uh, duty distinction. Um, of course, uh, as you rightly say, if we, um, if we introduce a metaphysical grounding of, uh, of duties, mm. say of B, uh, and there is another B who refuses on rational grounds, on counting grounds, to um, uh, accept those metaphysical duties as rationally bounding, we have a situation where the two can argue whether or not the, uh, the other B's, the first B's uh, arguments are metaphysical, say theological. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I was wondering really um, on what grounds could we in a Kantian way dismiss a Christian argument for, for instance, violating the, 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 the duty side of the, the binary, binary uh, given that you exposited first. Because there's obviously overlap of principles. One is a strictly naturalistic Kantian grounding of rationality, rational moral decision making, and supposedly the other side is not. But if I may just draw in, for instance, Paul Tillich's very useful concept of theonomia, mm. it's not, a, not only orthonomy, it's not only heteronomy. If we accept, if and if we accept, the human, it is reasonable to claim that the human being is a noble day and the practicing and autonomy in terms of rational freedom co uh, coincides 
with the uh, Christological paradigm, which the Imago Dei is a reflection of, a substantial one, mm. fleeting moment. But is, we have to accept the view that uh, the human and the moral agent is a human person's Imago Dei. Yeah. If, if you don't, I mean... If, if you don't. If you think it's a... It's I just a wanted, to see, of, what, just wanted to say, yeah. to see what, just a few reflections of yours, forgive me for, for, for laboring uh, this exposition. But the other side would claim that this is very rational, actually, to, to argue uh, that we remain rational uh, whilst at the same time claiming a theonomical approach to decision-making. So that um, complicates the matter. It's not, not that clear-cut. Although, if you're a strict Kantian, it's, it's I think, thrown out of the, the forum a priori. And the paradox being that Kant is a Christian. He's a stoic, so he's a stoic, so he gives whatever stoicism could lead him to. There is a stoic moment for him. Can't quote Thomas Aquinas in many instances without all the times referring to the Greek philosophy. Yeah, but he's a stoic, so 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 he's a to be wrong. I think the source of that in Kant is the uh, pro uh, Protestant scholastical uh, legacy. Uh, as far as uh, other... Uh, Protestantism uh, draws on scholasticism, doesn't dis uh, eject it up uh, en bloc. Yeah. Okay, okay. It's a reinterpretation of, of, of medieval Latin, Latin yeah. so I think that's where he actually gets it from uh, Protestant uh, uh, dogmatic manuals or manuals on ethics. Yeah. I have in my, my mind uh, Kant's views on, let's say, sexual attitude, which are exactly as reading uh, Thomas Aquinas, the discriminant distinction between criminal carnis contra naturam and secundum naturam, and the way he, 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 he speaks of that, it's exactly like uh, reading Thomas Aquinas. So, but, but, Famously, Kant uh, expels uh, God from his moral universe. I mean, uh, uh, yes. but I'm not sure. Uh, and we many times we have a discussion concerning this in uh, the University of Athens. Uh, how this uh, this notion of uh, reason, uh, whether it is identical to some transcendent God or God or not, it is transcendent. Okay. Uh, well, exactly that. Uh, I, I have a comment. Uh, I think it might be uh, explained in terms of autonomy. Uh, we often think that autonomy is something that could be called individual autonomy uh, based in desires or whatever uh, a person wanted to. But uh, actually, if we, from the Kantian point of view, it's not that autonomy. It's something that we can call principal autonomy. And in that sense, that Imago Dei uh, comes as a uh, unified reason which is individualized in any person as the same that prison and uh, instantiate, and that, uh, that's showing that, uh, some, uh, how to say that, uh, equivocacy between singular and universal, unlike particular, which is, is excluded. Uh, the only issue there which remains is that it, there is no necessary Christian uh, reference there. It's just uh, uh, universal, uh, the, what we call the theonomy. Theonomy is very similar to what's principle of uh, authority. I would agree. I would yeah. agree, which makes the case. Uh, but but any, any religions, uh, or maybe not any religion, but other religions would share that notion. Now, it's very interesting because we might find that the uh, um, looking back at Kant's teaching of transcendental schema, mm. Imita yeah. imitatio Christi is a transcendental schematism, mm. uh, which is devoid of dogmatic substance. It is mm. comes back to this uh, prototype of unified reason in, in yeah. action. Yeah, yeah but yeah. to do that, you have to uh, how to say that to make a philosophical yeah. concept, a philosophical notion of what you call Christ. And there is a very strange and interesting point there, philosophizing uh, Christianity, and it was sophically interpreted Christianity. He 
is that Christianity or is that something more at least in part? That's why I wanted to, that's why I drew our attention to this. Well, as well, this is your discussion. Thank you, Professor. In some way, my prediction is, if I'm allowed to prediction, is that Kantian ethics or Kantian tradition, tradition in ethics, already is dominated by the ethics. In the years to come, since the societies are getting multicultural, and I mean, virtual ethics is not a it's not a normative uh, theory at all. It doesn't provide uh, specific norms, etc. And utilitarianism is um, uh, very much silent. It doesn't have this uh, justification in something that is transcendent, etc. My prediction is that uh, the kind of tradition in ethics will become even more dominant or fully dominant, in, at least in the, in the field of bioethics. Um, uh, one could say that uh, it's uh, Religiously, religiously neutral, if I'm allowed the term, a religiously neutral approach to, 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 to bioethics. Uh, um, since it's founded on reason, um, regardless of the fact that reason sometimes uh, resembles God. Okay, it's, it's not overtly uh, atheistic, but uh, it's, it seems to be religiously neutral. And, uh, if reason, but I, I have many doubts concerning this. I, I, sir, I don't know if you're familiar with Tristram and Jr. Uh, um, I'm not sure that reason means reason means the same thing for uh, every every cultural setting. But if it means, uh, Kant is the, the, the most neutral uh, option we have to to, to uh, provide regulations uh, with, um, let's say, medical uh, character, uh, etc. It will buy it for a for an Hindu and a Christian and a Platonist yeah. or Italian. Yeah. If, you, if you allow, I would then say that it, um, it is possibly, for the time being, um, the best operative model to include both inclusiveness, that's a much stronger word, of course, than just neutrality, and normative competency, mm. Kantianism, in regard to two mentioned major traditions of doing ethics, utilitarian mm. and virtual ethics. Yeah. Please, uh, there's a question. Uh, I missed the, the no, I'm just comment. Uh, this is just a comment. I, missed, I still missed the first uh, part. So I'm, I'm saying that the, the, the Kantian model, I'm just following up on your, your input here, uh, in the future to come as an operative model for dealing in bioethical burning issues, it's a very fortunate model in the sense that it can integrate not only neutrality but even a sense of inclusiveness. Yeah. And at the same agree. time keep the normative uh, mm -hmm. competency uh, or, or competency for, for making stronger claims or norms I, I, in I, regard to the two other traditions. I totally agree with that. Culture. And uh, I, I would add that uh, the, 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 Kantian, the Kantian approach to biophysical issues sets low standards for moral agents. Why, and this is why it's much more preferable to the utilitarian tradition. The, the utilitarian tradition, uh, the, 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 its standards are quite high. I mean, I have to be a saint or a hero to, to be a good utilitarian, but I have to be a normal person, not just a rational human being, what Kant refers to, Kant refers to as rational moral humanity, in order to be a good Kantian. So, in my view, my, my prediction is not a prediction, actually, it's something that has already been happening, uh, the Kantian ethics will, will be dominant in uh, the field of bioethics. It's easy and affordable and uh, uh, neutral and everybody can abide by it. It's okay, why not? I just wanted to mention that actually it's two hours already. That's yeah, yeah. So, sorry, I'm <laughs> so I think about we've been you know, carried away. Yeah, which is a which is a which is a good thing. Yeah. I can yeah. say, but <laughs> this is the rare or here even uh, uh, with, if I could say uh, much less philosophical issues like this one. But uh, in that sense, I just wanted to stop here not to talk to the other people. But uh, I think that several of us could continue with uh, with a drink here and uh, go on uh, with that. So, so I would ask our our. Uh, Maybe <laughs> 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 to do something.